Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We will be proceeding with our first topic for the day. It's about uh, the uh, G20 summit. President Abdel Fattah Sisi and his Brazilian counterpart Lula da Silva have signed a joint statement to elevate relations between their countries in the summit. In light of this, we will be having with us on the phone Dr. Irini Shakir, a professor of marketing at the American University. Good morning, Dr. Irini. Good morning, Lubna. How are you, dear? All is good. Well, uh, we would like to ask you a few questions about the summit. Uh, first of all, social integration and combating poverty in Africa are two uh, topics on the summit's agenda. What is the role of the uh, G20 in solving these challenges in the African countries? Um, you would be talking about poverty and... Poverty? Yeah, and can hunger. you repeat the question again? Okay. Social integration and uh, combating poverty in Africa are two yeah. of the main topics uh, in the summit's agenda. What is the role of the G20 in solving uh, these challenges in uh, African countries? Yeah, actually these are very important topics, Lobna. Um, we know that uh, most of the countries are now suffering from these two topics. So these are very important topics um, to, uh, to discuss. And um, actually, let me summarize how can they contribute to that in three main points. I think, for example, um, for Africa, they can mobilize funding for poverty elevation programs and food security initiatives. Um, they can also advocate for fair trade policies that enhance market access for African products, um, as well as, for example, facilitate investments in social infrastructure. We are all keen uh, to focus on education, healthcare, and agriculture. Um, I think by putting priority on these issues, food security, agriculture, healthcare, and education on its agenda, the G20 can help shape policies that target Africa's unique challenges. Well, uh, can you give us your insights on the issue that Egypt has previously made several efforts in uh, reforming the governance institutions and energy transformation within the framework of uh, sustainable development? Oh, definitely, Egypt has demonstrated proactive leadership uh, role, particularly for developing nations. Uh, for example, let me remind you and recall on energy transition level, Egypt has been at the forefront of regional renewable energy initiatives that was by hosting COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh in 2022 and by investing in the solar and the wind energy projects. So, of course, these initiatives by Egypt and efforts align with the global climate goals. And actually, this showcased Egypt's commitment to balancing sustainable development as a priority on, her, on its list with environmental preservation. Um, again, I'll be repeating that these initiatives by Egypt position Egypt as a model for other developing countries navigating similar transitions. Well, uh, how do you evaluate uh, Egypt's uh, presence in this international uh, body as the uh, voice of Africa? Um, it's an evidence of its strategic, geopolitical, and diplomatic role, definitely. Um, and this is only, not only regionally. Actually, this will be regionally as well as globally. Um, representing Africa um, in such a high-profile forum, G20, underscores Egypt's ability to articulate the continent's priorities and priorities as we just mentioned in light of sustainable development, energy transition, and the fight against poverty and hunger, which we referred to in the first uh, question as one of the main issues on the agenda of the G20. Um, without question, uh, bringing Africa's concerns to the forefront of the discussions uh, with the world's largest economies, which is happening in the G20, uh, by this we act as a bridge between developed and developing regions. Dr. Irini, uh, to what extent uh, do you think uh, the G20 countries are interested in uh, creating uh, some kind of development in developing and emerging uh, economies? Um, look, the G20 has made steps in addressing the needs of developing countries. The steps have been there. However, commitments often fall short in implementation. Our real challenges are with the implementation part. And to foster development, several mechanisms can take place between the G20 nations and the developing countries. For example, let me, for example, mention financial assistance. 
by establishing dedicated development funds to support projects in infrastructure, healthcare, education in developing countries that would help. Uh, that's not all. Uh, they can also encourage partnerships between G20 governments and developing countries. And this will drive investments in green technologies and sustainable industries as well. Um, they can also provide technical expertise, training, technology transfer. All of these would empower local industries and governments in developing countries. So let me um, wrap up this again. Uh, by offering financial assistance, by encouraging partnerships, by providing technical expertise and technology transfer, um, this would definitely um, uh, help implementation of steps taken in the G20. Um, last but not least, we can also mention trade agreements. Uh, trade agreements and trade policies uh, by reducing tariffs, eliminating protectionism, ensuring market access for products for developed nations. All of these are going to help with the implementation of steps taken in the G20. Well, Dr. Irini, uh, in light of the current events uh, happening in the region and uh, the devastating events in the Middle East, what are the repercussions of instability in the Arab region right now on the global economy and politics? Um, um, can, you repeat that? Um, can you repeat that again? Okay, uh, in light of uh, the yeah. devastating events uh, in the Middle East and the Arab region, what do you think are the repercussions of instability uh, on the global economy and politics in light of yeah. the uh, summit? Um, definitely instability and conflicts in the Arab region, this have significant global consequences and effects. Um, there are many. Um, just um, I'm, I'm thinking now of, for example, uh, disruptions in oil and gas. And um, disruption in oil and gas supplies affect the global um, energy prices and markets, as well as the instability in the region. Uh, definitely politically uh, complicate international relation, uh, relations, not to mention what's happening in tourism, for example. Um, so it definitely affects both the economic level, um, looking at an aspect like uh, gas supplies, the oil and gas supplies, as well as at other levels politically affecting tourism, for example. Well, Dr. Irini, um, we'd like to know your personal opinion uh, on how the uh, G20 can enhance investment in Egypt and uh, Africa as well. Mm, definitely. And now you are talking about Egypt as well as Africa. Um, for Egypt, um, as I mentioned before, they can provide an opportunity to attract foreign direct investment. Uh, by hyphen key sectors, again, renewable energy, infrastructure, and tourism. This is specifically for Egypt. If I'm talking about the global economies in general, uh, definitely it will serve as a gateway to Africa and the Arab region. And this will only be uh, performed through facilitating partnerships that bridge gaps between major economies and the emerging and developing markets. Well, finally, Dr. Rini, we'd like to know uh, how can this uh, new alliance and uh, it's expected to be launched, uh, how can it address the real causes of uh, poverty and hunger at the international level? Um, they can definitely address poverty and hunger. Uh, for example, if I'm talking about hunger by promoting sustainable agriculture, supporting modern farming techniques, which is really very important, and infrastructure, this will boost productivity in developing nations, which will support hunger. Uh, by providing targeted funding for education and health care, again, and sustainability, uh, facilitating access to technologies, which I mentioned before, access to technology and technology transfer. This will enhance food security as well as efficient resource management. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Irini Shaker, for your time. We had with us Dr. Irini Shaker giving us insights on the summit. She is a professor of marketing in the American University. And we are going now for a short break and we'll be back.